We just saw Divergent uh, opening night here, and uh, to give you a quick overview, whether we liked it or not, who we think the movie's for, who would like it, who wouldn't like it. Um, I really like this movie. It was good. Uh, decent action film. Um, little bits of sci-fi, little bits of, uh, uh, you know, drama and comedy. Um, it's, I didn't know much about it going in, um, and I didn't know much about, like, I hadn't read the books or anything like that. Um, but it was, it was pretty clear from, just from the, like, the line and, and how, how many people were here to see this movie on a Thursday night that it's a very mainstream appeal movie. Um, it's got that. Uh, it, it's not necessarily like a clone of the Hunger Games, but I can see where, like similar tone, similar tone and similar appeal. Like people that would like the Hunger Games series would like it. Um, I, I found it to be a little bit faster paced and like more action oriented than the Hunger Games. Um, not quite as political or or uh, you know cut and dried uh, two class system based kind of thing. Um, more like a sci-fi Harry Potter, but again, like not as like the first Harry Potter is very like kid friendly and you know magic and things like that, and things aren't very clear. And this movie like really got to the it got into the story quickly. It told you about the world like through action instead of through exposition, and mm. um, you know even it over two hours long, it was it moved along really well and got a lot said a lot in, in its time what'd you think yeah i thought it dragged on at some points though yeah. um it was about what was it 220 yeah I, I thought they could have shaved about 20 minutes um some of it was just kind of filler stuff it seemed um yeah i think it really appeals more than anything to that kind of uh high school thing of like where do you fit in in life you know and like almost the whole story is told from the point of view of this girl who's really good in that. She plays like your every girl kind of thing who's yeah. trying to make your way in the world. And, you know, high school's a time of pigeonholing and where do you fit in? And that's where this kind of, this story is, is, uh, you know, the worst thing you can possibly be is someone that doesn't fit in in this yeah. story. What do they call that? The outcasts? Or they, I forget what they call those. The, uh, they have no faction. Everyone's got a faction. Yeah. And if you have no faction, you got nothing. Um, yeah, you're sort of a kind outcast, of an, homeless. Yeah, type kind of, of an extreme example of being in high school and not having any group that you fit into, I guess. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, yeah. did you like it? I did, but like some parts I thought dragged, and some parts were cliche ridden to where it was like, oh, okay, just yeah. uh, you know, all the usual tropes and cliches were in there okay. for this type of movie. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's. I mean, we can get, dig into it a little bit more. And um, the army. I didn't like the army guys. They seemed more like hairdressers. Like, I couldn't see them as being the protectors army. of the city. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just a stylistic thing, I guess. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think you were supposed to, they were supposed to be cool. Like, they were supposed to be, um, they were supposed to be attractive. Like, they, they were supposed to be, like, who you wanted her to go to. Yeah. I think that's that sort of. I don't know. They seem more like parkour hairdressers to me. Oh yeah. That's just oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's, I mean, yeah, I think that's, I think that's, you know, on purpose. I think that's, that's a choice that they made. But it's cool. They're creating a world, and they're trying to, you know. That's, yeah. Just... And it's so. I mean, as far as like the cliche part of it goes, the thing that like it's, it's every cliche from every like chosen one story mm, yeah like it's all the chosen one there's stories there's something different about you but it's a special different you know? right and it which i thought she had special powers but it, it did in. a good job of not like blatantly just copying one of them it like, yeah, no. kind of took little it's, bits and pieces yeah from all it's, of it's them. complimentary borrowing it's not it's not like a ripoff of anything they had sort of the there was sort of a matrix style like the hallucination thing was kind of matrix like right um the whole jacking ability into like your mind jack into somebody's mind and see what the you know like being able to read their thoughts and all of that mm -hmm. um and there's not really like magic in the world it's just sort of technology. super high technology yeah. um so it's not in that way it's not harry potter but in the like there's five different factions and 
when you come of age, you choose your faction. Um, so, like, the main girl in this, the protagonist of the story, um, and I, I can't, I don't know the actress's name off the top of my head. No, but she's in that other one coming up, too, right, with the air. So, yeah, that's what I was going to mention. Like, she, her character and her brother's character are playing a romantic couple in yeah. The Fault in Our Stars. So that's, that's kind of that. weird, like two like young adult stories like in a row that are going to star these two people and their brother and sister in one and this one universe and, the and then lovers, in the, next lovers in the next universe um and so i've i've heard more about the fault in our stars movie than i had about this one i this one i literally i'd seen the trailer and i'd seen that amc has been putting it on their cups for the last two months so right yeah heavily promoted they heavily were promoting pushed. it a lot um the, yeah, I felt like there were parts of it that were a little bit slow, um, that it could have sped up a little bit. Um, I definitely saw where, you know, they're they're digging in for this to be a franchise. That, totally. you know, that yeah. It's there's more story than. than Having gonna... said that, the ending's not frustrating. It's not like I, I, at one point I thought, oh, this is going to leave on a total cliffhanger. Yeah. But it, it doesn't. It, it just it, it does have an actual ending. It has so a good ending. That. Yeah. It has a good ending, and it also, they don't... I felt like the first Hunger, Hunger Games had a really a really tight ending. Like, it was, it could have been a self-contained mm -hmm. story, and you just never go back to it again. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I felt like they got more... They, they got through more story beats than the first Hunger Games did. The first mm -hmm. Hunger Games was like... The first 45 or 50 percent of it was just establishing the world and sure. teaching you about all this stuff because there's a lot to learn about how everything works in that. Yeah. Um, and then the other half of it is them actually playing the games for the first time. And it's not mm -hmm. really until the second movie that they really sort of expand into. Yeah. Like that. There's more to it than that. That there's there's a rebellion and 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 that sort of thing. Yeah. And this one. It's, there's no, like, evil class and good class, or there's not, like, a, a ruling class and a lower class. They're all sort of equal, although one of them is really More kind of, like, in charge. Others. It's a lot like George Orwell's Animal Farm, that short story yeah. to where the, uh, the pigs, the intelligent ones, end up trying to run things, and there, there's a bit of that going on. Yeah, where... it's like, I was trying to come up with, like, clever names for all the factions so that I could remember them, but... It was kind of hard to do that. There's like, there's the gray bland faction that she starts in. Yeah, but they're like the selfless ones. Yeah, they help people. Yeah, and then there's the smart ones. The the bamp the erudites or well, yeah. So there's the selfless ones, the erudites, which are like the smart ones. There's the badass motherfucker ones, which is the. Uh, the parkour hairdresser guys. The parkour ones. hairdresser guys. <laughs> uh, the Dauntless. Uh, and then there's, like, the hippies. Yeah, the commune ones and the and so, vegetable growers. Like, What's the other one? There's the, another one. There's another one. <laughs> and that's the thing, is, like, it was hard to remember. I, and I, kept, I was literally, like, I kept trying to come up with some sort of a mnemonic or something to remember what all the different factions were, but... Like, we never really see the hippies do anything. No. Um, it's really the dauntless, the erudite, and the the selfless, yeah. boring people. Um, so, I'm sure there's, you know, I'll share, I'm sure they'll like, explain more about the other classes and that kind of stuff Would in you... it. Um, as far as, like, performances go, like, I think all the... The acting performances were good. I thought Kate Winslet was like from the trailers. Even I thought she was like a little bit asleep at the wheel, kind of dialing it in. But I think she that was, was good, yeah. I think but, that was sort of a poker face, so that you couldn't tell from the trailer, or couldn't tell like that she was obviously on like the good side or the bad side sure. or the rebel side, sure. Like where she really fit into everything. It's like she seemed like. She seemed sincere, but sort of at arm's length yeah. all the time. Like she wasn't really letting you see. So it's like yeah. 
she acted like she had a poker face the entire time, and that comes across as, like, a slightly, like, not a bad performance, but just kind of a boring, like... Sure, yeah. Where she, you don't have a personality. Which is also what I thought of the main dude that was in it. Like, you know, good-looking guy, but... Four? Yeah, four, yeah. But not really the whole lot of expression or personality there. The girl I thought was good, but, like, I don't know about the book, so just judging it on the movie. Tris? Yeah, so good. much is just resting on her shoulders, the whole film, basically. Yeah. She does great. Um, I'm just not sure if they're going to expand it as a franchise. It might be good to have more, like, more characters involved, and, you know, but I don't know. That's I guess that's the story. Yeah, I mean, it, compared to, like, I don't know, like, other... Like, compared to Katniss in The Hunger Games, I think she's more emotive and interesting. Right, yeah. Like, she's not just the she same. She does like, a good job, thing. yeah, yeah. So, I, I thought her performance was really good. Um, I, I think she'll be good in The Fault in Our Stars. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. to seeing that and seeing how that turns out. Um, the uh, From an effects perspective, like, I, the, the movie's... The, they have displayed it in IMAX. We didn't see it that way, but it was. I didn't really see anything that like spectacular that would have been. No, I'm pretty sure there was some digitally added tears and stuff like that. <laughs> like, um, and then there was yeah, it was it was okay. It was yeah, the composited stuff. But I mean, it it, it fit the fit the thing. One thing I want to say though is they they didn't really venture into the story much about what was out there in the world beyond the fence. So it's wide open, I guess. I don't know the books, but it's just wide open for. I like that though because I can explore. I really felt like, and I, I thought this really for like the first seventy-five or eighty percent of the movie, like really up until like it did like right toward the end, it started to drag a little bit, mm -hmm. and then they kind of finished off where they were going to finish off. It seemed like there was a point where they could have ended it, and I would have been fine. And mm -hmm. then they sort of kept going a little bit, and yeah. then there was like another uh, another coda ending. Um, but I felt like the story was really tight all the time. Like you were just, they, they weren't trying to tell you things about, like you weren't hearing about things that were happening off screen. It was all right. about what was happening to her when it was happening to yeah, her. Yeah. Um, so you didn't have like, you know, there wasn't a scene with, you know, like a, in Harry Potter, you didn't see like a scene of like what the other house was doing, you know, right. it was, or it wasn't, uh, uh, Kate Winslet doesn't have like a scene by herself where she's, you know, making plans with someone or, or they're not yeah. developing anyone. They, they literally just follow Tris all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that. Um, that's one of the things that I really like about the matrix. The first matrix is that it's just, you're 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 you're, you're getting Neo. information as Neo. Yeah, you yeah. are Nero in that. Yeah, they're Neo in that. So, um, but yeah, uh, really had no expectations about this movie. Um, we started to get a sense that this was a bigger deal than we thought it was when we saw the lines. Mm -hmm. um, we came in to see the Muppets earlier, and there was huge lines. There was one big line coming to see Captain America for like a special. Uh, like a uh, screening that you had to like win a contest to get into. And then there was a ton of people for Divergent and we had to line up uh, like ha we lined up an hour before the show started just because we were here um, and there were already... And that was one of many shows. Yeah, and so yeah, I mean, there's they all probably several have, hundred people saw the show tonight. It's going to have a strong opening weekend if nothing else. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I would say if I mean if it's like this everywhere, it's going to be number one this weekend. Right? Yeah. Usually. No, without qu without so. question, it's. Um, and unfortunately, I, I think you know. So do you think will will it like reach the same kind of level as like Twilight and Hunger Games? It's impossible to tell, right? If it resonates with people, sure. I think it all comes down to timing. Like if it's if they're up against one another, then it's more of a direct competition. Sure. But if it's spaced out like this, like the Hunger Games was in theaters for like seven months, wow. like it, it may still be showing some places. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like yeah. it, it opened in like September, October, and it was still showing after yeah. the first of the year. Um, so I don't know if that. I don't know if it'll be that level. Um, but this is also the first in the trilogy. I think, or the, however many there's going to be. Um, 
I I think it's that same audience. So yeah, I think mm-hmm. it'll be it'll be a really strong movie. Yeah. Uh, and you know, if, as far as the other things that are opening, I mean, Grand Budapest Hotel's opening wide this weekend. I think that'll do fine. Um, but I I think this is the one to beat this weekend. I think mm-hmm. this is a more. I mean. It's got a wide appeal. It's got a wide appeal. Especially the young people. There's a lot of people that like Wes Anderson movies, but I don't think as many as, like, would see The Hunger Games. Sure, yeah. So I I think this is... I think this has got that crowd centered. Um, You know, I'm sure there's people that are going to go see The Muppets. Probably not more than one weekend. Right. But for that, that one really... Like we said earlier, I mean, it's just not... It's not up to par with the other family movies that have come out this year, um, with Mr. Peabody and Sherman being number one last week. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's going to stay that yeah. stay up in strong contention. So, mm. But anyway, good movie. Um, yeah, well worth, worth a watch. Uh, worth a watch and yep. Thanks for watching us. Yep. See you next time. <laughs>